Should you boost your child for COVID or not? What I'm about to say might surprise you because I'm gonna give you two different perspectives, the argument for why to boost your child and also the argument for why to not boost your child for COVID, which probably means I'm gonna get hate mail from both sides and may mean that I'm doing something right. But it's not being said this way in the media and what I don't think you need are more distilled down sound bites. What I do think you need is a context so you can have the knowledge, so you can be empowered, and you can have confidence in your own health choices, whatever they are. I'm also gonna share what I'm gonna do in my own family. Now, here's where it comes from. I have two really trusted advisors, really super smart people, really have, are infectious disease doctors who've studied this all their lives. They are on staff at the top hospitals. They're on the FDA vaccine advisory committees and data safety monitoring boards, and they have totally different perspectives on whether you should boost your child for COVID or not. I thought that most helpful would be to actually share that with you, share that context so that you can make your own decisions and understand how even top experts can see the data and can disagree. Now, quick caveat here, we're talking about kids who are 18 and under and otherwise healthy. Different calculation for people who are older, 50 plus, 65 plus, with chronic medical conditions, anyone who's immunosuppressed, whatever age they are, or medically frail or lives with somebody who might be. Now here is what they both agreed on. They both agreed that getting two encounters with the virus, whether that's two doses of the vaccine or say an infection plus a single dose of the vaccine, drastically reduces a child's risk of major complications from COVID. They also agreed that everybody should be getting their flu shot. So PSA, make sure everybody's getting their flu vaccine right now. Here's the different. Here's the pro side for getting giving a child their COVID booster. He said, listen, this vaccine is very safe. And even when we look at the complication that has the highest discussion, which is myocarditis, he said that the risk of that is still, of course, drastically lower from the vaccine than from a COVID infection itself and much less significant from the vaccine. He said that that, that risk is highest in the first week after that second dose. He said after that, the risk falls. In terms of efficacy, because we always look at safety and efficacy, he says that yes, after the child gets that second encounter with the COVID vaccine or with COVID, that yes, their risk of severe complications falls drastically, but that it does over time start to creep up. So the risk is rare, but it's a risk, a rare risk of a very severe complication. And he said, giving that booster reduces that rare risk of a severe complication even further, which is why his calculus is go ahead and boost your child. On the con side, he says, listen, he looks at the exact same data from a different perspective. He says, what we know after they've had those two vaccines or the infection plus a vaccine, their risk of severe complications is really low. And after that second one, it really becomes sustainable for a year or more. So there's not really a marginal benefit to giving a booster. On the safety side, he says, listen, anything we do, vaccines, treatments, over-the-counter supplements, anything can have a risk of adverse effects. So in the absence of a marginal benefit, it's not worth any safety risk. So he recommends not giving a COVID booster to children who've already had those two encounters. There you have it. There you have two opposing views from two smart people who really both want to do the very best for everyone that they can and have a different interpretation. What am I doing in my own family? Well, my eight-year-old has had two doses of the COVID vaccine at less than a year ago completed, and my five-year-old developed Omicron right as he became eligible. And so we then held his first dose of the vaccine until just recently so that his vaccine could have its peak immunity right through holidays and fall respiratory season. So as a result, we won't be boosting either of them right now. Of course, as information changes, as we get more information, I'll share that with you. I hope that helps. I hope you gave, that gave you the knowledge you need to have confidence in your own health decisions. And I'll talk to you soon.